We'll go back to our big story, which is the Reserve Bank of India has, tri has uh, tightened the stress loan norms, and uh, CB Anthony uh, he represents Edelweiss ERC. CB, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Now, CB, I just want to uh, want you to clear the air. Uh, do you think the new uh, RBI norms will they be applicable to the fresh uh, loans, or this also would be applicable to the existing loans? I think the guidelines are very clear. It's applicable to all the loans where uh, where the restructuring has not been implemented as of date, as on the date of circular. So if it's not implemented as on the date of circular, all will have to follow the new guidelines. Okay. Now, Sibi, is this, you know, this is a great and a bold move by Reserve Bank of India to clean up the entire banking sector. But this entire move will come at a cost. And I'm not so sure if the smaller, uh, small and mid-tier PSU banks can really afford to bear the weight of provisioning in this kind of an environment where they are not getting a lot of money from the government, the credit cycle is broken down, and the treasury yields are moving against them. See, first of all, it's a great move by the Bank of India. This was, in fact, in my view, it was long overdue because so many schemes with so much eligibility criteria, conditions of restructuring, it all was created. They were creating a lot of confusion. I think now it's a very simple, generic framework that's come. That's a great move. Now, uh, to my mind, on your question, I mean, ever since 2015, after AQR, Asset Quality Review by Reserve Bank, I think most of the assets have been identified and uh, and provisioning has been started. Uh, barring maybe a few power assets where, you know, because of some regulatory forbearance, uh, provisioning was uh, inadequate. I think now with this guideline, all those will have to be identified and provided for. Of course, there may be some some SMA cases, but SMA cases also you have 180 days to resolve now. Uh, so I think there will not be that much surge. Maybe. Uh, my calculation may be around um, uh, 60 to 80,000 crore may have to be provided for, uh, which was factored in when the recapitalization also was announced, you know. So I don't think this is a great uh, negative for the banks. In fact, it's a great positive for the banks because uh, restructuring would become much simpler. Right. So we just stay with us. We've also got on board Karthik Srinivasan from Ikra as well joining in. And Karthik, morning with the recent RBI norms, it seems most, uh, you know, we could see a rise in NPAs and most cases would have to be referred to IBC. What would be the impact of this according to you as there have been very few cases being resolved under IBC in 180 days? Yeah, she said the... The, the reported NPS is likely to uh, to go up as uh, part of this measure taken by, by RBI. But at the same time, maybe the overall stressed asset scenario may not go up because to a large extent that has got, got factored in. But optically on the reported NPS, we could see a, spa, uh, a sharp spike. For example, if you look at the RBI report of financial stability, SMA2 accounts for about at a system level close to three and a half percent of the of the assets and um, a sizable part of that may need to get reclassified as part of the new uh, new guidelines so to to that extent there could be a, a smart jump in terms of of NPS and accordingly the, the provisioning cost could also go up as we've seen over the last six seven months the uh, the cases where um, the RBI had asked banks to initiate action under NCLT or uh, get into some sort of a resolution, things uh, are yet to see conclusion. And now with this new trigger of all assets above uh, 2,000 crores and in default as of March 1st needs to get resolved within a period of six months. So uh, in timing could be could be tight. So we could see based on past trends, you know, more amount, more number of assets could potentially move to to the NCLT, which means, again, the provisioning requirements could go up. So uh, one has to be a bit watchful over the next couple of quarters as, and see how things really pan out in terms of how fast and how well are the resolutions done for um, a lot of these delinquent accounts.
means that you're going to be very busy uh, because uh, the government, uh, the RBI rather, has stepped up on, on uh, uh, rating uh, these uh, loans as well, Karthik, uh, especially above uh, 2,000 crores. I think uh, they have to be two uh, credit uh, rating evaluators uh, giving their clearance on the credit profile of these loans. But, uh, Sibi, I just want to wrap up this discussion. This is going to be, of course, the talking point all day long. But just wrap up this discussion uh, with your sense of, uh, you know, what this does for the bad loan pile of $150 billion that we are contesting with right now. Uh, is it in a meaningful manner likely to reduce the pressure in due course while there might be some interim pain and, uh, you know, uh, adjustment to the new, uh, uh, the new process, so to speak? I think it would be an adjustment to the new process. If you, um, you know, be look at, uh, while there obviously would be short-term pains, but uh, with, with more frequent reporting that banks have to do to the acrylic database, effectively uh, one can say that the whole measure, though painful, should improve the financial discipline um, amongst the, the borrower community and also from a lender's point of view to be a bit more proactive in, in monitoring these accounts. You need to, uh, to sort of report to RBI on a weekly basis on delinquent accounts above a certain level. And historically we've seen you know, a different attitude by borrowers when they service bank loans and when they service debt capital market instruments. So, in a sense, uh, we are seeing measures taken by, by all regulators to, to converge on the two. So, while there would be near-term pain as people adjust, but over a medium term um, should really be good for, uh, for the entire um, economy and especially on the banking sector or the lending community as such. Right. Uh, Sibi as well as Karthik, thanks very much for joining us this morning. This is going to be our top story, the NPA overall, uh, and we'll get you uh, the perspective from bankers, from credit rating agencies, from asset reconstruction companies, covering all angles to understand how this is really a step uh, in the long term uh, to clean up uh, the banking sector. We'll take a break as we do so, in fact. Uh,